I'm going to call this video my Tower of Power. Here we go. And there it is. The price is $3,500. So if you're looking for a bargain system, this is not the video for you. I'm like Dr. Frankenstein. I've put together these pieces into a creation. I can guarantee I'm the only one on YouTube who has done this, mixing and matching these particular pieces. If you want to spend more, you can. The speaker on the bottom, the Micro 3000 from SVS. If you don't need the smallest, then you go up to the SB3000 or even 4000. They have a SB16. If the Bose S1 Pro, you can... Sp we had a little glitch there. What I was saying was, if you want to upgrade from the Bose S1 Pro, the next step in the Bose line is called the Pro 8. And I've seen people uh, use that in the home, and that would be incredible. If you've been following my channel, I've been putting together many different sets of combinations of portable PA speakers. Well, this particular system is more homebound. It's not completely portable, even though it could be, but that's not my intention. As far as I'm concerned, this is about the smallest system I have created that sounds as good as a very expensive hi-fi system. Now, that will be a topic of debate with the audiophiles out there, but I'm not here to debate with them. I am just here to put systems together that I enjoy. This system uh, is price independent. It's pretty expensive, but it really performs. It is full range sounding, and to my ears, because everything is subjective to your own hearing, it sounds as good as my tower speakers. So let's see what we got here. In the middle is the subwoofer. It is the smallest subwoofer out there. Maybe there's one more smaller one, the KEF KC62, but this one is considerably less expensive and it actually has a higher output. So this little speaker, this subwoofer, is 22 pounds. Can't get much lighter than that. It's the SVS SV, SB Micro Sub. Really will impress you the amount of bass that comes out of this. Very tight, dual eight inch speakers. Very clean bass. To the left is a fairly new speaker. It's been out for a year only a year or so, but it's becoming pretty popular. I have done a, another video on it. Hope you have seen that first. And that is the RCF TT515. Now, let me tell you a little history about the 515. I have the bigger brother, the TT10A, which is $3,000. I didn't pay 3,000 because I bought it two years ago before the, the crazy price increases. Uh, but this speaker, a, B, next to the 10A, and I'm not going to make that into a video. You just have to take my word for it. It basically sounds the same. The 10A is a 10-inch woofer, by the way. It sounds almost exactly the same. The 10A, of course, is much louder, but I'm not playing 130 dB in the home. So when you play it less than 100 dB, which I do, I may, let's say, 90 dB is the highest I'm going to... Uh, go as far as my ears, maybe 95 if I'm really in a good mood, but I don't play long at those volumes. It sounds exactly like the $3,000 speaker. It is super clean, and as you turn it up, it keeps staying clean. It's like a studio monitor, except studio mon monitors aren't made to be played ac across the living room, of course, and they're not made to be played at 95 dB. This speaker is incredible and it stays completely clean. The RCF, in my opinion, has the best high end, the cleanest high end 
of any PA speaker I have heard. That's my long and short of it. It's the best. And now, to the right, I have paired it up with the Bose S1 Pro. Now, that's only a $600 speaker. You're wondering how that fits in. Well, first of all, look at the tiny size. The Bose S1 Pro is 15 pounds, and it kind of matches uh, just size-wise with this, with this grouping. But besides the, the aesthetics, how it fits in, it looks nice on a tabletop like this, or in a room, it, it performs. It really keeps up. Now, Bose is known for a mid-range, so I'm, I think it's adding a little of that Bose smooth mid-range to the RCF. RCF is all high-end, kind of just super clinical, super sharp high-end that you can't get from any other speaker, especially Bose. Bose is a completely different sound signature. This sound signature is smooth, mid-range heavy, non-fatiguing. RCF is more of your traditional PA speaker, very clean for vocals, acoustic guitar, electric guitar. So, I have the, R the Bose lined out from the subwoofer. And then of course, I like Bluetooth. I don't like to be connected to wires. So I've connected a Bluetooth adapter to a small mixer. The RCF uh, doesn't have Bluetooth. It doesn't have mixing ca capabilities. So this isn't the most simplistic system. It's a little complicated, but I can guarantee the sound I will put this up against, at least, at least in my system, I have $3,000 tower speakers, and this little system uh, comes pretty close, if not equal. I'm not gonna AB them, but I'm just telling you, this system is very, very hi-fi sounding. This is not the system I would take to a gig, a live uh, performance, even though the RCF, definitely, but obviously not. Um, the SVS subwoofer, that won't reach the dB level that a live performance needs. And the Bose S1 Pro is excellent up to its limitations, which is about 100 dB. But in live performance, I'm definitely going to use larger speakers. But I will bring the RCF. That will keep up up to uh, 127 dB. That is pretty loud. And people might ask me, why are you mixing the SVS, which is a home hi-fi subwoofer with PA speakers. Well, that's part of the experiment that I've been working on. And it, to me, this is a very successful experiment, one of my most successful. And that is, I'm gonna call this a hybrid system. Hybrid, I'm mixing hi-fi with PA gear. And the rationale is, why would you need the SVS? Why don't you just stick with the Bose S Sub 1, which I have, a PA sub. By the way, they're the same price. The Bose Sub 1 is $900 and the SVS is $900. RCF 515, $1,800, very pricey. So going back to my rationale, why am I using the SVS? Well, a live subwoofer doesn't go down very low. It's tuned, most of them are tuned at 40 HZ and it gives you that kick in the chest from the kick drum that live music requires. Bass guitar doesn't go much below 40 hertz. So that's where they, they uh, roll off when they make um, live PA subs, usually about 40, and it really produces its max SPL at 40. The difference is a home hi-fi sub, a studio sub, goes considerably lower. This sub goes down to 23 hertz. Of course, home, home Hi-fi subs can go down to 16 hertz if you get large ones, but very little music content is down that low. That's more for music explosions, and I'm not listening to this system with, with movies. This is strictly a listening to music system. Tracks. So not much music goes down below this, but there's a lot between 23 hertz and 40 hertz. So I feel like I'm missing, if I put the sub one in the middle here, it would sound great. It would really have great kick. Besides, it's much, much larger. It would, it would look out of place in the home. These fit excellent. I could put this in any living room. But um, the Bose S Sub 1 doesn't go down below 40. 
So you're missing all those frequencies that music does have in the high 30s, 35, 30 hertz, high 20s, finally down to 23 hertz, and, and slightly below. You know, subwoofers don't just stop exactly where the specs say. The specs say 23, but you're still going to have content that you hear down to 20. Maybe not at over 100 dB, but you will hear it at normal listening volumes. And my normal listening volumes for hi-fi audiophile, audiophile listening is 85 dB. And I come up with that figure for two reasons. One is my hearing safety. You don't want to push it into the 90s and definitely not to 100s. You're going to, you can hurt yourself and then you want to be able to appreciate all the beautiful equipment and expensive things you bought. So I keep it down, 85 is my max. And there's a couple other reasons. One is mixing professionals, they mix at 85 dB. It's a sweet spot. If you play, play it too low, you don't hear the full dynamics. If you play it too high, actually when you play it too high, your ear starts, it doesn't even sound loud anymore. So then you creep up to 90. Then 90 doesn't sound loud anymore. You push it up to 95. After a while, you're playing incredibly loud, but your ear still kind of feels like it's 85. It's, a, it's like a vicious cycle. So I'm very careful about my listening, uh, and I actually use a dB meter. So I'm very adamant about hearing safety. So that's why I'm choosing to make a hybrid system. And it really has worked. I'm very happy. And the fact that the small form factor really fits into a home decor. If you watch past videos, I do have a sub two and I have played that in my living room. I should really take it out and show you the difference in size, but it really doesn't fit so well in the house. This, this you can tuck under a table, a computer table, you can hide it. It's really, really nice. Same thing with the RCF. This is new technology. I've talked to RCF and I said, what, you know, what happened to the TT-10? Why would you make something similar? The TT-10 is just a little louder, but RCF has actually come up with a speaker that sounds the same. So when you're playing at 85 dB and you put on the TT-10 and then you AB it with the 515, it sounds almost the same. You would think the TT-10 would have all kinds of extra bass, a 10 inch woofer. You think it would have better mid-range, but it really doesn't. It's pretty much the same. But this speaker, you can tuck it. You can tuck it under a table. You can tuck it behind a tree. It's just amazing options you can do with something so small. And if you watch, again, if you watch previous videos about this, I even slid it under my bed. I'm not going to be using this in my bedroom system, but can you imagine 127 dB in your bedroom? Uh, I don't even want to go there. Okay, and the Bose S1 Pro, everybody knows about that speaker. It's just a classic. It's just, I love that speaker. But I can't wait when they come out with the updated model. I'm sure it's around the corner. Eventually, the Bose S2 Pro will come out, and that's the speaker I'll, I'm waiting for. Mainly, I'm waiting for that speaker is because the app on the S1 Pro is really lacking. So I'm sure the next speaker will have a nice app, hopefully. And hopefully they'll have some mid-range adjustment that this one doesn't have. But the reason why I'm looking for an app is because from a distance using Bluetooth, I can't control the Bose. I can't lower it or raise it to blend with the TT515. So if I have an app, I can mute that second speaker. I can raise it. I can lower it. And it really helps me blend. So that's the only glaring weakness I'm complaining about the, the Bose. So... No sound test right now, that will be in a future video, but I'm just gonna tell you right now, this is not an inexpensive system, but it sounds incredible. Really hi-fi. I'll put this system up against, as I mentioned, hi-fi system with your receiver and your wires that are not portable. I can, I'm moving this system from my hallway here to my downstairs. I can move it to, I can even play this system on battery power. Yep, there are the batteries, but I, I'm not going to use this system much for portable use. So that's it. I challenge, I challenge the audiophile community. They're gonna be up in arms. This, this breaks all the rules. How dare you use PA speakers and compare it to an audiophile system? No way. 
Well, what they don't realize, because they never heard anything like this, and that is the dynamics. This stays completely clean at 85, 95, even if you're pushing it to 100. You know, once in a while, I will do that when I'm in the mood for short ter term. I'm not going to play that loud for very long. But but you can't do that with little bookshelf speakers. They, they, they're just not made, made for that. That's why they these are PA speakers. They're made for that kind of high volume and they stay clean at those volumes. And my little subwoofer here, I'm not gonna push that to over 100 dB. It's not made for that. But if you play it in its limits, it is super clean subwoofer. Oh, I forgot to mention. So how am I running this little system? Well, I'm running it on a mixer. There's the little guy, famous Yamaha MG6, very popular. And there is the Bluetooth adapter that isn't made anymore. That's a Bose adapter, but you can get a Bluetooth adapter on Amazon now for $15 to $20. I spent a hundred. That's again, technology marches on. So that's it. I have Bluetooth. I have control of the sub on one gain control. And then I have the RCF, my main, call that my main on my other control so I can blend. Oh, and the sub, like I said, the sub is outputting to the Bose S1 Pro. And that's it. Not the easiest setup. You do have a bunch of wires, so that's why I'm not really gonna be even thinking about bringing this portable. This is more of a stationary system, but it is portable from one room to the other in the home. That is doable. Okay, that's it. Any questions? I know this system is not going to be um, very popular with many people because the price is just crazy. It's above the budget of most people. Do the math, you know, 1800 plus 900 plus 600 and the mixer is another $130 and then all the wires. So not so inexpensive. But if you need something small and you want to approach hi-fi and PA ability, performance with dynamics at volume, and I'm talking this, I will put this at 100 dB, I will put this up against any audio file system. There we go, I'm gonna get the um, comments right now. Either the audio file people are gonna comment or the PA people will comment because I'm breaking all the rules here. Okay, hope you enjoy this short video. Sound demo will be in the future, hopefully. Or maybe you just have to take my word for it. This is Bill. Later.